So just to continue my series on forgotten fighters, I want to talk about a guy called Tommy Watson, who went by the acronym Seaman Tommy Watson. Now, this is a fighter whose name I've come across various times on Box Rec, so I thought maybe uh, it would be worth saying a few things about him, because he's one of those guys who um, done fairly well in the early 20th century and who went by the acronym of his trade name. In fact, often fighters in those days uh, served in the armed forces, particularly in the interwar years, uh, and the war years for that matter. And so they went by names like Rifleman, Seaman, and so on. So a little bit about Tommy Watson. Uh, and I actually got this link from the Nipper Pat Daily Wikipedia article. Uh, like I said, I don't have access to BoxRec at the moment. So, Tommy Watson was born in Newcastle upon Tyne in 1908, and he died in 1971 at the age of 62. He was a British featherweight champion between 1932 and 1934. Um, as befitting his name, he served in the Royal Navy, and he was a uh, lightweight champion in the Royal Navy, and then went on to make his professional debut in September 1925 with a points win over one Tom Pinkney. He was unbeaten in his first 30 fights um, and only suffered his first defeat in June 1928 when he was beaten on points by George Rose. Um, that's another fighter whose name I came across on Box Rec. Um, he actually had victories over Nipper Pat Daly, uh, but like I say, we need to take into account that Nipper Pat Daly was only a teenager when he was fighting men in their 20s and 30s. Um, so in April 1931, in his 78th fight, he was stopped for the first time. First time in his 78th fight by Dom Valente at the Royal Albert Hall. Another 14 wins followed, I'm almost quoting Wikipedia here, and he beat figures like Luigi Quadrini and Phineas John. Uh, I must admit I haven't heard of those fighters before finally getting a shot at the British featherweight title held by Neil Tarleton. In November 1932, uh, Tarleton and Watson met at the stadium in Liverpool and the fight went the full 15 rounds and Watson got the verdict to become British champion. In January 1933, he travelled to the United States for the first time. There he beat uh, Fidel La Barba. These are all Hall of Fame fighters. Um, by unanimous decision at Madison Square Garden, which gave him the right to meet uh, the great Kid Chocolate. Um, he returned to Eton, uh, excuse me, turned to England, and was active there. And made Kid Chocolate and Watson met at Madison Square Garden, um, and the world featherweight title was at stake with the MYSAC, which I believe is the acronym for the New York State Athletic Commission. But that was a world featherweight title. The fight went 15 rounds. Uh, Kid Chocolate got the decision, but it did go the 15 rounds. So clearly. Um, Tom Watson had uh, grit. Only a week later, he faced the Canadian champion Bob Lawrence in Toronto and won convincingly with points. Back in England, he beat Benny Sharpie before suffering only the fifth defeat of his career when he was disqualified as, uh, against Sonny Lee for a low blow. He was due to face Panama Al Brown in December 1933, but Brown pulled out and instead he faced Dave Crawley in what he hoped would be accepted as a British title defence. But the British Boxing Board of Control refused to accept it as such, with two other boxers already making him an eliminator. He beat Crowley, Johnny Cuthbert, Willie Gannon, before uh, making his first defence of his British title in March 1934 against Johnny McMillan. Watson won on points to retain the title. Um, he beat Jimmy Walsh, um, Jim Cowie, Francois Mackins, Dick Corbett. Um, Watson made a second defence of his title in June, July 1934 again against Neil Tarleton at Anfield in Liverpool. He got the points decision to regain the title. He moved up to lightweight in October 1934, uh, beating George Odwell, and in 1935 beat um, Lee, it uh, doesn't say which Lee that is, uh, Tommy Spears and Frankie Brown in British title eliminators, but lost a final eliminator in October to George Daly after retiring due to a cut eye. Having lost three of his last four fights to the world champion Freddie Miller, he retired from boxing. Um, Watson subsequently worked as a referee from 1937 until the 1950s. 
that figure Freddie Miller is not to be confused with Britain's Fre Freddie Mills. This is Freddie Miller of Cincinnati, Ohio. So, seeing Tommy Watson, definitely uh, an underrated fighter, I would say. Um, uh, it's a pretty impressive career and um, probably one of the greatest fighters ever to come out of Newcastle upon time. Seaman Tommy Watson.